Hello and welcome to the Reviews Brothers. It's been a while since I dusted off the Commodore 64 and with it being October I thought we'd see what spooky offerings there are on the system. I went onto the Reddit C64 pages to ask the legends on there for some recommendations and they did not disappoint. I had more than 50 games recommended to me so I got hold of as many of them as I could to check out. I couldn't get through all of them as I'm not made of time, but I have more than 30 to show you in this video. So I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who made a suggestion and I'm sorry if yours isn't here, but I did have a blast playing through these games, well some of them anyway. Now how about I shut the hell up, you hit that subscribe button and we take a brief look at some of the spookiest Commodore 64 games in alphabetical-ish order. <laughs> Cauldron by Palace Software sees you playing as a witch who sets out to stop her evil pumpkin king from being a bastard. You have to collect keys to open the colour coded doors and in each door you'll get an ingredient for the spell that you're trying to make to kill the twat. I really like the graphics here, everything is smooth and you spend half the game flying on your broomstick across the dangerous land filled with things that are really good at killing you. You do have a magic attack that can kill enemies in these sections too though. Once you've found a key for the door, the game switches to a side scroller where you have to hunt caverns for the ingredients. These bits are stupidly difficult thanks to annoying enemy placement, terrible fall damage and some dodgy clipping that sees you fall through ledges that you definitely landed on. Also, in these sections you don't have your magic attack for some reason, making things even harder. The thing is, I still really enjoy playing this game. I have accepted that it's one that I'll probably never be able to beat, but I still come back to play it every time I get the C64 out. The sequel to Cauldron, cunningly titled Cauldron 2, sees you playing as the Pump King who is seeking revenge on the witch from the first game, which if you ask me is an awesome plot and I'd love modern games to do something similar where you play as the bad guy who gets revenge on the good guy, or girl in this case, from the first one. Anyway, as you know, pumpkins are in a permanent state of bounce, and the Pump King is no different. You're always bouncing, but you can change the height and distance of your bounce, though not that easily. You're in the witch's castle and just like the first game you have to collect items to make a spell to take the hag down. These are really hard to find and even harder to get once you have found them. The bouncing is very tough to control and the castle is huge with loads of spooky enemies and puzzles that you need to solve. Most enemies can kill you in one hit and there's also hazards that will kill you but you never know until you actually touch one what is a hazard and what isn't. It can be quite annoying. You do get magic attacks to kill enemies with which does help but the lack of any real map or guidance just makes me feel like I'm wandering around totally lost. I mean that's probably because I am most of the time. The graphics here are cool though with some really good animation. This is another game that's stupidly hard and I rarely know what the hell I'm meant to be doing but you know what I actually really like playing this one again and for some reason I come back to it all the time. Check this one out if you're a sucker for punishment. Chiller by Mastertronic is not the same as the NES game, it just has the same name. Here it's a single screen platform game where you play as a guy who has to go through various spooky locations from haunted forests and graveyards to the ghetto. Hmm, we won't touch that one. Your mission is to collect all the crosses on the level while avoiding enemies. You have no attacks but you can jump over most critters while grabbing the crosses which can be in hard to reach places. In fact in most cases it's actually hard to tell what you can jump on in order to get the crosses. The graphics here are pretty messy and almost look like they're glitched. There's no sense of perspective and the things in the background can still be jumped on as if they're on the same plane as you. You also have a timer to contend with which is very strict and was the cause of most of my deaths. The timer also kind of acts as your health and you can refill it but usually the health that you pick up is next to items that damage you so it's not always worth picking them up. Having said that, the game is pretty addictive and I did manage to get to the last level. The controls are decent enough and this is a great game to play for some spooky action.
The Evil Dead is a game that I've tried a few times on the Atari 2600, but the Commodore version seems to be basically the same. I've never really been sure what you're meant to do here or how to do it, but you play as what I assume is Ash and you have a top down view of the cabin, complete with the swinging chair on the porch which is pretty cool. I spent my time running around, closing doors and windows and occasionally killing demons with the axe that's laying around. Your friends are also in the cabin, but I can't tell if I'm rescuing them or killing them half the time. The controls here are a little frustrating and I did often get stuck on the scenery which wasn't ideal, but this is another game that I kept coming back to just to see if I could beat my previous score or find out what the hell I was meant to do. Yeah, I know I could have looked it up, but that's no fun. I like the crazy enemies that have nothing to do with the movie, like weird arms wobbling around, but still they somehow managed to fit in. I also like the fact that you can see your friends being possessed and turning into demons, that's really cool. This is a game that I will go back to, but first I think I should actually track down the manual and read so I know what it is I'm meant to be doing. It's definitely not the best game out there, but it's a good one to waste a few minutes with. Fiona Rides Out Now by Ian Gray. You know, Ian Gray. You play as Fiona, who has most of her powers taken away from her by the other witches after she becomes too powerful, so she's all like, screw you, I'm getting my powers back. You fly around on your broomstick, taking down the other witch bitches while avoiding their attacks. Eventually you'll come to a stage filled with monsters. You have to shoot these and collect the essence they leave behind, and then you fill your cauldron up to slowly get your powers back. This is a pretty cool game actually, though it's easier said than done and if you touch anything that moves, then you're a dead woman. Even though the game controls pretty well, you will get killed a lot, or at least I did. What's interesting though is that when you are killed, you don't instantly lose a life. Instead, you're sent to hell, which is very metal. Here, you can try to escape by flying through a very claustrophobic maze to exit. It's very tight, and if you touch anything, then you will actually lose a life, but it is possible, and it's a cool way of giving you a second chance. But, like I said, I actually found this game really difficult, and I couldn't even get past the first level. I do have to say though, I had fun trying. The controls are good, the graphics are decent, and I really like the music here. I do recommend checking this one out if you get the chance to play it. Forbidden Forest by Paul Norman is a cool game where you play as an archer who sets out to kill all sorts of scary monsters in the Forbidden Forest. You have your trusty bow and an unlimited supply of arrows. Thankfully, you'll be fighting off spiders, demons and more. The controls are okay, but it can be hard to aim your shots as you rotate. Also, you can only take one hit here before you die. Enemies will come at you from all over the place, but if you have good reactions, you should survive. The graphics and animation here are all actually quite terrible, but kind of charming. They're very pixelated and they kind of look like an Atari game. The C64 is capable of much better, but this doesn't take away from the fun gameplay. The big bosses especially, they're huge and while they do look like they were drawn by toddlers, fighting them is really fun and actually quite challenging. Definitely check this one out if you can. Friday the 13th has had a surprising amount of games, and this one starts with the most awesome scream I've ever heard in a video game. Then you're shown some terribly drawn characters and you set out to kill Jason Voorhees. The gameplay is actually a little confusing at first, but once you get used to it, it's actually kind of fun, even though it makes no sense. Basically you run around Camp Crystal Lake and its surroundings looking for the other counsellors and picking up weapons on the way. You've got to find Jason, who for some reason is disguised as one of the counsellors, but you never know which one. And the way to flush him out is to attack everyone you see, and when you hit the right one, he'll transform back into Jason. And you can tell it's Jason from his classic black attire, you know, from when he went through his John Travolta in Greece phase. But anyway, once you do find him, you just smash him in the face with whatever weapon you're carrying until one of you dies. If you win, then you switch to another character and you repeat the process. Now, while the game looks very basic and the music makes my ears want to bleed, this isn't actually that bad of a game. I quite enjoyed hunting down Jason, and I would say give this a go if you get the chance. Even though I can imagine some of those overacting dramatic YouTubers would probably say this is terrible, it's actually quite a fun little game of cat and mouse.
Frankenstein Jr. for the Commodore 64 is an adventure game where you play as, funnily enough, Frankenstein Jr. on your quest to fix up old daddy Frankenstein, or should I say Frankenstein's monster, before his body gets too decrepit and falls apart. A noble quest, I'm sure you'll agree. This all takes place in what is presumably Frankenstein's castle, and you must explore the castle, collecting all the items that you need to get body parts and lotions in order to fix up old Papa Frank. As you can probably guess, the castle is a giant maze, with lots of winding pathways that are very easy to get lost in. Couple this with the countless ghosts and skeletons bent on stopping you at all costs and you have a pretty big challenge ahead of you. As well as all of the orrid old gribblies that you have to avoid, you have to make sure not to run out of whatever the green gloop in the bottom right hand corner of the screen is. Once that jar is empty, it's game over. The game is pretty unforgiving. Get Witchy is a very simple and addictive game where you play as a witch who just wants to fly on her broomstick and collect sweets, or candy as those less educated would say. But a bunch of bastard ghosts have decided to kill her. Maybe they got the wrong idea when she said she wanted some sugar. The controls here couldn't be simpler. Old Witchy Witcherson is constantly descending and you just have to press the fire button to make her rise. But if you hold the button, she moves forwards at a downward angle. Then when you release, she'll shoot up in the air, not on heroin. Now this sounds simple, but it's actually incredibly challenging and quite hard to get used to. Also if you get too far off the screen in any direction, you die. Getting the right balance while avoiding enemies is really hard, and can actually be quite frustrating, though I did find myself trying again and again. This is another game that is more modern, being released in 2019 by Digital Monastery. This means that the graphics, sound and gameplay are all very good. Everything here is smooth and there's no flicker. I'm guessing this was made during the crappy, sorry, flappy bird phase. While there is barely anything to the game, it is surprisingly fun and would be a good game to take turns on with your friends to see who can get the biggest high score. Ghost Hunters from Codemasters is a game that I always used to play growing up with my brother, even though we had no idea what the hell we were doing. That's right, I said hell. English people are tough, so we don't have to say heck. This game sees you take control of a ghost hunter who's pretty useless as he seems to be terrified of everything he sees. To be fair though, the house you're in is filled with all sorts of monsters, skeletons, vampires, mummies, and of course rats, bats and spiders. You have to run around collecting items and hitting switches that let you explore more of the mansion. If you hold down the fire button, you start shooting your machine gun and a crosshair appears on the screen. Guide this over monsters to make them go off the screen so you stop losing your energy, or as the game calls it, macho energy. The game looks decent with a fantastic spooky aesthetic. The worst thing about it though is that every couple of seconds a hint box appears on screen telling you to avoid monsters or collect items and so on. This is fine, but it's all pretty obvious stuff, but the first time you play the game, it's okay. But then it does happen all the time, and it stops everything that's going on, and gets really annoying when you've played the game just a few times, and you still see the same three messages on the screen. However, I still do find this one really fun to play. And what's more, the whole game can be played in two-player co-op, where one player controls the guy on the screen and the other player controls the gun and has to shoot the enemies. This is definitely the best way to play the game, and I highly recommend this one if you've got a friend. Here we have, well, Ghost Hunters. Yep, this is also called Ghost Hunters, but there's no space between the words Ghost and Hunters like there is in the other game, so it's totally different. It's also a totally crap game. It's basically a shit version of Space Invaders, where you shoot ghosts that come down the screen. It looks terrible and there's barely any sound. Also, the controls only seem to work when they feel like it. You shoot your spear at the ghosts and hope for the best. There's no animation on anything, but it still manages to be incredibly jerky. This is a piece of werewolf crap. Make sure you get the ghost hunters with the space between the words if you want to hunt ghosts on the C64. This is Ghostland, a game where you play as the ghost. About time, right? 
This is a very simple game where you've got to chase a man who has a key through a maze and grab him. But as you can possibly guess, it ain't that easy. If you touch anything, then you die. Or maybe not die. Whatever it is that happens that ghosts. I don't know. The paths here are all very narrow, and there's other enemies and obstacles moving around for you to avoid. The problem is, is that you have barely enough time to catch the bloke with the key. It is possible though, and I did it a total of two times. It seems like the mazes don't change much, if at all though. The music here is pretty cool, though there isn't much of it, which is a shame. I did find this quite addictive, but once you've played it for 5 minutes or so, you've pretty much seen everything there is to see. But it's a fine time waster if you need one. Everyone knows about ghosts and goblins. Most retro gamers that think they're tough have played the NES version until it made their asses bleed with its difficulty, and the C64 version is no different, other than it's probably even harder thanks to the controller. In case you don't know, it's a side-scrolling action game where you play as Arthur, and you've got to go rescue your sexy girlfriend from Satan, which is always fun. But Satan has hordes of the undead on his side, and you just have some pants. This game looks okay, and surprisingly the controls are smooth and do function well, but I did complain about them a minute ago, so what's my problem? Well, it's that you're using a C64 joystick, which just has one button, so you've got to press up to jump, and the joysticks have eight directions, so this is easier said than done. You're constantly bombarded by enemies that can often literally spawn on top of you, so you literally have no chance to avoid them. The music here is really good, and the game is probably doable if you've got hours to put into learning it, but for me, I made it to the first boss, and as far as I'm concerned, that's as far as I'll ever get. Next up is Ghosty from Elwood Software. This is a really crappy game, where you play as a monk who shoots ghosts that scroll across the top of the screen one by one. The game looks as bare bones as is humanly possible, and it literally moves at one frame a second. You press the fire button to shoot your arrow at the ghost, and when you do, the ghost will retreat back the same way it came. So the only way to actually hit it is to wait for it to get two thirds of the way across the screen while you're as far to the left as possible, and then when you shoot, if you time it right, the ghost will back up into your shot. Once you've got the timing down, then the game just sort of goes on forever. The ghosts also take shits on you, and you do lose a life if it hits you. But there's no penalty for the ghost getting all the way across the screen, so the game just goes on for as long as you don't get hit, and you just get a high score, or more than likely, until your patience runs out. But the controls here suck, the gameplay sucks, and you know what? The graphics suck. Don't play this one, it sucks. Next up is Ghouls from Micropower. This is a really strange sort of cross between Pac-Man and Donkey Kong. You play as Pac-Man with legs, and you have to eat all the dots on the screen, and then get to the top of the level. Of course, there are monsters and ghosts out to stop you from doing this. The game looks kind of strange, but not really bad. It all moves really quickly though, and you can jump, but you can't attack. The thing is, is that the game is really feckin' hard. I couldn't even beat the first level. This is mainly because your jump is so useless, and there's some spikes early on that kill you instantly, but you just have to time it perfectly, which is incredibly hard to do. If you're one pixel out, then just forget it. On top of this, there's a ghost on the stage that's constantly following you, very slowly until it gets you. This game could have been fun with a better jump, but sadly it is completely ruined by the poor mechanics, and it's just not worth playing. Ghouls and Ghosts, the sequel to Ghosts and Goblins, also from Capcom, got a port to the Commodore 64. It plays almost identically to the first game, which means it still has decent controls letting you run and jump, but this time you can also shoot up when you jump in the air, and you can even shoot down. This comes in very handy, but it doesn't make the game any easier. Yes, that's right, it's still hard as balls, with enemies coming at you relentlessly and giving you barely any time to react most of the time. You'll fight all sorts of spooky monsters while finding hidden chests that contain armour and weapons, or even evil warlock guys that turn you into various useless things, like a woman. 
if you have a certain armor, you can use magic by holding down the fire button. This is really good at clearing the screen, and what's even better is that you can use it as much as you want as long as you don't take a hit. So it's not that long, let's be honest. Surprisingly here, the graphics are actually considerably worse than they were in the first game, with everything looking pretty cheap, though there are cool effects every now and then with weather, and there isn't a lot of slowdown which is nice. I do have to say though, the music here is great and it really adds to the game. Definitely go for this over sound effects when you're playing. Overall, this is exactly what you'd expect for a port of this game. If you're a fan of the series and you think you're tough, then why not see if you can get through it? Now apologies while I butcher this name, but Ladbaya de Mortz by Antonio Savona is an awesome modern game for the Commodore 64 released in 2019. You play as a monk who is being chased by crusaders that are out to kill him. You find refuge in an old monastery and have to explore the large environment finding crosses, solving puzzles and avoiding loads of monsters in order to survive. The game looks fantastic with some awesome graphics and animation for the system. The controls here are spot on. You don't have an attack so the action button just makes you jump and you can only take one hit so do be careful. The game is broken into a bunch of interconnecting screens that are filled with all sorts of enemies from rats and bats of course to skeletons and ghosts that will hunt you down. Most screens contain an item for you to collect or an object to interact with. Some of these open doors or paths to new areas of the map which is surprisingly large. Thankfully they're pretty generous with their checkpoints so you'll never have to go too far back if you do die but you do get limited lives. Also, you'll find little hints hidden around the world which give you clues as to what to do next. Each screen is kind of like its own little puzzle and usually when I would enter a new area I'd just take a minute to look around, check the patterns of enemies and locations of objects and usually by doing this I could see the best way to try and tackle that area. However, quite often if you stand still for more than a few seconds an enemy somewhere will get you so do be on your guard. I haven't managed to finish this game just yet, but it is definitely one of the best C64 games that I've played, which might be cheating as it is a newer game and I can't really see this game being made in the 80s, but either way, it's currently free on the developer's website and works flawlessly with Vice. Definitely get this one, it's an absolute blast and perfect to play on Halloween. Mad Doctor is an interesting game. You play as a fake Dr. Frankenstein and you have to make your way through various locations collecting body parts to create your very own monster, which is always a cool premise. I really like the graphics here. You get a map to traverse taking you to various parts of the world which are all populated with a range of monsters and villagers that you'll need to kill in order to get the parts you need. I did find the controls were a little messed up, but I think this may have been a problem with my system rather than the game. I had to use a combination of the joystick and keyboard just to walk around, which I'm sure wasn't quite right. But when I did get used to it, I had quite a lot of fun playing this one. You switch through various commands, and the game is a bit of a puzzle game as you'll need to figure out the right way to get the body parts that you need. As with most C64 games like this, it can be a little cryptic, or actually very cryptic. But the vibe is really cool and I would recommend playing this one if you can. Monster Buster is a puzzle game where you shoot monsters from a cannon into other monsters matching their colours. So yeah, it's literally just Buster move with a monster makeover. But it is a good copy. The graphics are bright and colourful and it's always easy to tell what monster is what. Also, the music is pretty cheery and kind of fits the game. The controls are also really good, aiming is easy, though it doesn't mean that you'll hit your mark every time. You get a few game modes, an infinite mode that just goes on until the monsters hit the line at the bottom of the screen, there's a puzzle mode where you have a certain number of shots to clear all the monsters from the screen, and the later levels do require some clever brain combinations. Then there's the random, which just gives random monsters and sees how long you can last, which is kind of the same as infinite really. And really that's all there is to it. I found it pretty fun and ended up playing it for way longer than I expected to. If you're into games like Puzzle Bobble, then this is worth checking out. Here is Mr. Mephisto by Dave Lucas, released in 1984. The game starts with an awesome title screen showing a demon surrounded by flames, and then you get some cool creepy intro music. 
The actual gameplay sees you take control of an unlucky bastard who's trapped in hell and you have to make your way up various staircases where you often have to collect an item and make it to the exit. Of course this is not easy at all and there's demons all over the place that want you dead. I found controlling your character pretty tricky. Now the controls are actually kind of solid and responsive but you can fall off just about every ledge in the game so even if you go up or down a tiny bit you often just fall into the flames below. You do get a few lives indicated by the picture of Spider-Man in the top right corner but these will go pretty quickly. This game is all about taking your time and learning the patterns of the demons, which can take a while. It actually took me forever to just get off the first level. It's not an easy game, but thankfully you don't have a timer, which is a godsend. But what doesn't help is that if so much a pixel of you touches any enemy, then you'll lose a life, which kind of makes sense, but with the sensitive control it really makes it hard to dodge anything, and you don't exactly move like you're in any rush. I have to say though, I really love the sounds here. All you get are your footsteps and there's an ominous hum which I'm assuming is meant to be the noise of the moving staircase. Oh, and did I mention that the staircase is actually an escalator constantly pushing you back down? Overall though, I really did enjoy playing this one and it's definitely a great game to check out on Halloween. You'll just have to put your own creepy soundtrack on in the background. Next up is Necromancer. This is an odd one. You play as a necromancer and your goal is to plant trees while fighting off what looks like soldiers and sometimes some monsters. You can't actually move, instead you just control the crosshair on screen. You do just need to pass it over enemies in order to defeat them and by pressing the fire button you'll plant a tree. Basically you've got to defend your trees while they grow. So placement of your trees becomes very important. You want to make sure the trees are easy to defend. The enemy will mostly ignore you and go after the trees. Once you've got a certain number of these fully grown, the level advances, which just means more enemies on the screen. While it's not particularly spooky, other than having spiders and other critters in it, this is actually quite an addictive game that is simple to play. Have a go if you can. Nightbreed from Ocean is an action platformer that's actually based on a movie that I've never seen. You play as a bloke who has to go around fighting all sorts of monsters and monster hunters and it turns out that you're a monster yourself and can turn into a beast, though I haven't got that far yet. The game looks really good and all the locations and characters are really cool, though a bit washed out. It controls surprisingly well too. You've got a few attacks which can be done and this all depends on what direction you're holding on the joystick when you press the action button. Levels are large and maze-like and you'll spend a lot of time hunting for items and keys to help you progress. There's often loading times between the scenes but they don't really take away from the enjoyment. It's definitely not the best game for the C64 though, as is often the case with ocean games, the difficulty is very high but not really in a good way, more in a cheap, basically unfair way. Enemies are really tough and plentiful and a lot of memorization is needed. I would say to give this one a try if you can though, but don't expect it to blow you away. However, if you can use cheats, like I did, it's actually a pretty fun time. Now what kind of horror collection would it be without Nosferatu the Vampire with a Y, released in 1988? This is an isometric puzzle platform game where you'll be exploring a spooky castle ultimately trying to put an end to that pesky neck fetishist. The game looks pretty good in terms of detail in every stage but it's more like a spectrum game with its basic colour palette. I'm assuming it also came out on there but I'm too lazy to go to Wikipedia. Movement here is quite slow which can make it tricky to avoid enemies that are constantly roaming the halls of the castle, also it's a pretty big place to explore, so I found myself getting lost most of the time and of course you have a time limit before it's game over. You will find items and weapons along the way which do help, you can even get healing items which you can hold onto to use when you need them which is really handy. Eventually when you figure out what the hell's going on you also get to take control of a couple of other characters, each recognisable from the Bram Stoker book, there's Jonathan, Van Helsing and Lucy. This was honestly a pretty impressive game, I did find the music a little grating after about 10 minutes but I still wanted to carry on playing. I would definitely recommend giving this one a go, it looks great, plays surprisingly well and is the right amount of challenge. You might want a wingman with you though to help from getting lost like I did.
Phobia is a side-scrolling shooter where you're exploring the system of phobia. You choose your stage and fly through some great looking stages that are filled with all sorts of monsters and grim things, though I have to admit some of the levels are just generic space shooter ones. Having said that though, the game looks good and the controls are spot on, being very responsive, and you'll be able to dodge the enemy fire when you need to, not that it looks like it in this footage. You collect power-ups to make your ship stronger of course, and thankfully you don't always lose them when you die, which really helps, as there is shit coming at you from every angle all the time. The bosses look cool and are pretty large, once you figure out their patterns, they don't give you too much trouble though. At the end of the day, this is pretty much a basic shooter, but it's done very well. It can be hard as balls at times, but if you're a fan of the genre, then you'll probably like this one. Scooby-Doo and Scrappy 2 is another game that I grew up playing with the C64, and I really like it. You play as Scrappy, and you've got to rescue Scooby and Shaggy who have been captured. I have no idea what happened to the rest of the gang, presumably they're dead. It's a side-scrolling platform game, and it plays really well. You can run and jump by pressing up on the joystick, which is never ideal, but you do get used to it. The fire button punches, and you can hold it down to increase your puppy power. Most enemies can be killed with just a tap of the button, but for larger enemies like zombies, you'll need a full charge. What's annoying is that the only way to figure this out is by trial and error. Also, there's some enemies that can't be killed at all, but you won't know this until you've tried killing them a dozen times with no avail. There's no music in the game, which is a shame, and the only sounds are of you jumping, punching and collecting items, so everything does feel a little empty at times. Thankfully though, the gameplay is solid. You definitely need to get used to the timing of the punches and how the jumping works. Also, it's one of those weird games that when you jump on a moving platform, you actually have to move your character with it. If you stand still on moving platforms, they just slide out from underneath you. It did take me a while to get used to this, and it can make the platform sections really tricky. Though, this is probably a good thing and done by design, as even with the tricky platforming, I did manage to complete the whole game in less than 10 minutes, and actually it was the first time I've ever actually managed to complete this game, though I did have infinite lives I'll admit. Without those, it would take considerably longer. But I would say this is worth taking the time to play through, it could probably be considered a bit of a hidden gem for the system. Shadow over Hawksmill from Cytronic is another modern C64 game which you can tell from the great graphics, animation and overall presentation. Here you play as a dude exploring a spooky town and its surroundings. It reminds me a lot of Castlevania 2 for the NES. You'll be hunting for items to open up new areas while fighting off evil spirits and monsters. The controls here are really good, it's another one that uses up to jump though. If you hold the fire button, you shoot your gun. You can't move while shooting and you have a crosshair that you can use to aim and take out enemies from anywhere on the screen. If you hold down on the joystick and then press the fire button, you switch items that you're holding onto and it's indicated by the hold button in the lower middle of the screen. You'll need to be holding the right item in order to use it. This did confuse me a few times when I would try to crouch and shoot smaller enemies rather than standing there and aiming the crosshair like you're meant to, but you do eventually get used to it, and it's probably the best control scheme for a game like this. You'll be rescuing villagers, finding hidden treasure, and fending off evil spirits, and it's all pretty good fun. The whole thing is kind of open world, and as I'm stupid, I often found myself getting lost, so a map would have been nice, and the fact that there's no hints, and you basically have to press down and attack on just about every box, crate, and jar that you find in order to search can be tiresome, and it can be very easy to miss a single crate that has an item you need, so you'll do a lot of backtracking too. However, I really enjoyed playing this, and it was impressive to see such a complex game work this well with just a C64 controller. I still prefer La Baya de Mort, but this is another excellent showcase of why games should still be made for old systems. The Monsters for the C64 starts out promisingly with an awesome version of the TV theme tune that actually plays throughout the game, which is something I'll never get bored of. And while the gameplay can't quite match the lofty heights of that classic tune, it was a lot better than I expected, though still not great. Throughout the game you take control of pretty much the whole family, starting with Lily, you walk through the house firing spells at a load of monsters and collecting items to increase your strength. Once you've got enough you can go find Herman and Grandpa who will then carry on through the underground layers and so on. The game looks really good, and although it is kind of fun, 
it just isn't that decent. Most of the time I found myself wandering around aimlessly, enemies would come out of nowhere to deal cheap damage and it's never really clear what the hell you're meant to be doing, though this is kind of common for games of this area. The controls aren't too bad and the gameplay just ends up becoming repetitive and convoluted. Play this game for the music, but not really anything else. And finally for today, we are ending with Wizard's Lair, released in 1985 by Bubble Bus Software. You play as the awesomely named Pothole Pete, who has stumbled across the Wizard's Lair, and you have to explore a seemingly endless number of rooms, collecting items and weapons to help you escape. What's interesting is that as you'll collect items, you'll change colour, which then lets you pass through objects of that same colour. This gives the game a bit of a puzzle element to it. Everything moves really fast here, and enemies will often chase you through doors. In fact, it's very easy to die here, maybe a little too easy. Thankfully though, everything looks great, and the pace of the game makes things interesting, though it often doesn't help with the difficulty. The controls are responsive though. There's no music during gameplay, just some generic sound effects, with the sounds of you dying being particularly obnoxious. But this is a fun game to play, and it's one that I'll definitely be going back to to see if I can escape with all the treasure. Remember just a minute ago when I said that was the last game we were going to look at? Well, I was lying, as I've got a couple more. This is Frankenstein, and it's another text adventure, so yeah, you probably already know how I feel about it. This time, all you get is a wall of text. No images or sound, no nothing. Once you've read the long paragraphs, you can input the usual commands to see what's around you to pick up items and the such. The problem is, no matter what I did, I just couldn't get out of the very first room. Everything I did resulted in the roof of my house catching fire and collapsing on me. In the game, not in real life. I must have tried at least ten times, and by then I couldn't really be bothered to look up a guide. But again, if you're a fan of these kinds of text adventures, then you might enjoy this more than me. It's just really not my thing. Here we have Go Go the Ghost, which sees Go 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 through a bunch of levels, 150 in fact. The titular ghost, and yes I did say tits, has to avoid all kinds of monsters and hazards that will do anything they can to mess you up. Each level is just one screen, and you've got to collect a range of items while dodging just about everything you see to open up the path at the end of the level. The graphics here are pretty cool, and I do like the designs of some of the monsters, but there are quite a lot of random shapes and balls that are in there too. They should have just stuck with crazy monsters. The controls here are pretty decent, but maybe a little too sensitive. The sound effects though are very obnoxious, and they made my ears want to bleed. The biggest issue with the game though is just there's so much shit going on all the time, and it's really hard not to die in just a few seconds, and when you do, that's when you hear the worst sound effect of all time. I wouldn't say this is a bad game, and it can actually be quite fun. Just make sure you turn off the sound, and maybe listen to an Avril Lavigne album instead. So there you go, a very brief look at far too many games. Which one is your favourite, and what games should I check out for future videos? Make sure you let me know in the comments below. I'd like to say a huge thank you again to everyone on Reddit who gave me a suggestion, and apologies if I didn't get your game in this time. On screen now you can see where you can follow us, so why not do so, we've got loads of cool stuff for you to enjoy. But now all that's left for me to say is thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.